So I am Edward Liu, and I believe that ray tracing, real-time ray tracing is the next step forward for real-time rendering. However, just doing ray tracing naively all, often produce a lot of noise in the result image. So that's why today in my part of the talk, I'll first do a bit of a general discussion on the challenges that we have been facing uh, trying to solve this real-time denoising problem. And then I'll provide an overview of some of the really exciting results that we have achieved in terms of real-time ray tracing denoising. And finally, I'll also show the possibilities of implementing offline light transport algorithms such as pass tracing in your game engine with the XR and show the benefit of that uh, to the content creation process. All right, let's get started. So let's begin by briefly looking at why there's noise in ray tracing based rendering. So, so like Nacho mentioned, uh, rendering equation is basically an integral of several product uh, of uh, several uh, complicated equations de defined over the hemispherical domain over some certain shading points. There's this incoming radiance, which might have a really complicated visibility term. There's also BRDF, which is you know tricky to sample and cause you uh, cause you noise from sampling too. So that is typically why, and also uh, uh, in terms of global illumination, the incoming radiance itself is also recursively defined as the outgoing radiance at some other surface point in the scene. So that's why typically uh, you, you would expect to need to have at least hundreds, if not thousands of samples to get you some uh, clean image rendered with ray tracing. And, uh, but in the case of real-time rendering, uh, the realistic budget for us is probably only one to two samples per pixel which is extremely insufficient for you to get anything reliable. So uh, to fight those noise over the recent years, people actually come up with a lot of different approaches. And many of these offline renders these days are actually pairing up with a denoiser to clean up, clean up the image after the rendering. And in fact, this is a really, really active area of research. For example, listed here are only a selective set of publications from last year. And the first two are actually from NVIDIA. And uh, the SVGX work basically use tempor temp the spatial information from the current frame combined with temporal information from history frame to, uh, to denoise one sample per pixel pass tracing and achieve really good results. And next, the recurrent autoencoder uh, work, we basically try to achieve the same thing, but by just feeding everything to a neural network and let it figure out the sequ sequential relationship between the history frame and the current frame. So it's quite, quite amazing that the neural network can also do this, this type of thing quite well. And apart from these, researchers from UC Berkeley actually had a serious series of effect-specific denoisers that's all using uh, Fourier spa space light transport simulation analysis. And uh, for example, there is this work called access aligned filter for soft shadow denoising, and there's also this shear filter for AO and shadow denoising. And, uh, and finally, uh, film studios like Disney also been using deep learning neural networks to uh, to do denoising. And in the, the work listed there, instead of, instead of using the neural network to directly filter the image, they actually use the neural network to predict the spatial filter kernel for each pixel and then apply the, the filter, spatial filter over the image. And of course, there's also a large body of work that has not been mentioned on that. And, um, and on the production side, we, all set, we also have really awesome product like, uh, like the AI-based denoiser that we're currently shipping in Optics 5. So uh, all, of, all of those approaches that I mentioned earlier, they have different uh, performance versus quality trade-off. But I think it's, it, it is generally safe to assume that the typical expected input is at least tens, if not hundreds, of samples per pixel, which is still too much for real-time budget. And other work like SVGF, they only use one sample per pixel. However, they depend heavily on reprojecting the history information back to the current frame. So that works okay when you have the correct information, correct motion vectors in your scene, but for a lot of the circumstances, you just don't have all the correct uh, motion vectors. And for example, uh, we don't yet know, know how to efficiently compute the motion vector for soft shadows casted by an area light source on some moving geometry. So when you don't have the motion vectors, your filtered result will just end up with a lot of ghosting, and it, that's not acceptable to us. Um, and the cost of those denoisers mentioned earlier are maybe from hundreds of milliseconds to minutes, which is very fast compared, compared to waiting for the pass tracer to converge, of course, but it's also a totally sto different story in real time. Like our frame time budget is only 16 milliseconds. So the other thing that is worth mentioning here that is that most of the previous denoisers assume the primary visibility, visibility buffer is also very noisy because they simulate depth of field and motion blur via stochastically sampling the visibility buffer. 
And, and, uh, and that's also different in games. Uh, for real-time rendering in games, we just have a totally different set of budget and requirement. First, it is just simply not realistic for us to be able to afford more than a very few number of rays per pixel. Therefore, we wish to work with extremely little sample count input, and we actually target one sample per pixel for all the effects that we're interested in denoising. And second, we want to support dynamic scenes, in, including uh, dynamic camera, moving light sources, and moving objects. So using temporal information without the correct motion vector is also not an option. And, and, and also, we like our result to be temporally stable and flickering free across frames. And thirdly, the budget for the denoising itself cannot be too high either, since it is, it's going to be a newly added pass to your frame. So we target one millisecond for 1080p images on gaming class GPUs. So for the quality of the denoiser, I would say it's just not realistic for us to be able to achieve the same level of qualities to those offline ones, given the number of, uh, number of samples in our input and then the denoising budget. So, but however, we still like to get the result to be as perceptually as close to the ground truth as possible, especially when we want to preserve all the expected shading features for the stuff that you're denoising. For example, for soft shadows, you want to have contact hardening. For glossy reflections, you want to have uh, the uh, elongation when you're looking at the, from the grazing angle. Uh, so, uh, so lastly, and thankfully, we don't really have to deal with the noise that's in the G-buffer since a depth of field and motion blur, they're always done in post-processing in games. So after looking at all those requirements, we can also think about what our, our, our options are when des designing a denoiser. So first, we can choose between applying the filter in different space, and uh, the simplest one is just to do filtering in screen space. And people also did it in light map space, path space, and actually in light view space as well. And, and then you can also choose to uh, only rely on data that's in the current frame, or you can somehow borrow data from history frame to either try to increase your effective number of sample count, or you can, uh, with that, to uh, improve tempo temporal stability and reduce flickering. Then we can decide what are the information that's available to, uh, to us aside from the one sample per pixel signal in the input. We can always collect some mean and some statistic, like a mean and variance from the input buffer. But apart from those, uh, the, the information in the G-buffer, like normals and depth, they're also really useful to us. However, the other thing that is also useful is that uh, depending on the scene context, there's a lot of things in the rendering scene that can guide the filter. For example, for soft shadows, the size of the light source should definitely apply, apply, uh, uh, affect the, your, how you do the filter. Imagine you, if you just have a point light source, then your filter footprint should be zero, since there won't be any noise in your, in your filter. And also, for reflections, obviously, the roughness of the surface matters as well. And another really important design choice is that we can design effect-specific filter, or you can, we can design filters that work on all the lighting components altogether. The, the former is probably more expensive, since that might, we might need to do multiple filtering passes for each of those effects. But the latter is actually more trickier, since we might, you might have different effects overlapping on the same pixels, and they may require very different filter radius across them. So, so yeah, these are just the, the, the choice. And I'm really glad to say that we found some really exciting solutions among all the choices mentioned earlier, especially for denoising gloss reflections, area light shadows, and AO. So the denoisers that we came up with are all effect specific. So we have three different kind of denoisers that works completely differently for those uh, mentioned effects. And they all try to use other information in the scene context, like uh, the surface roughness or ray hit distance or light source size to guide the filter. And they're able to re preserve all the shading features reasonably well, and they work pretty well at one to two samples per pixel compared with all the pr previous approaches. And it's also worth mentioning here that all the denoises that we're talking about here, they are really using one to two sample per pixel without temporal reprojection. So that means we don't really have to suffer from the, uh, the ghosting problem. All right, with that aside, let's look at some images. So uh, Ignacio showed this image. So this is ray trace soft shadow with applied our denoiser with only one ray per pixel. And this is ray trace AO with two samples per pixel. And this is ray trace glossy reflection with one sample per pixel.